Hello, welcome to Mechanic uh, Material. Uh, in today's lecture, we're going to talk about internal forces. When a body, rigid body, or a beam, or anything, just like this example, is subjected to external forces, those external forces create internal forces. You really like to know what those internal forces, were they doing, like where this beam is going to fail, how much internal force I have, what I have. And if you look at this beam right here, we have it's subjected to a, a uniformly loaded triangle load. At the tip is 0.8 kip per foot or 800 pound per foot. And the, um, we like to know if we come at point C, what is those internal uh, forces doing? What is the internal forces? Internal forces could be axial forces, could be tensional compression, it could be uh, shear forces, it could be bending moment or tor torsion. But in here, in this hour case, when we're going to cut it, we're going to find out what we're going to have. So first, let's solve this problem. Uh, when you have this problem like this, the first thing you want to do to solve this problem is draw the free body diagram. That's your first step that will help you. So I'm going to come down here, do the free body diagram. I'm going to replace the support system with a single uh, uh, force AY and BY. Then I'm going to go ahead and take this triangular force, convert it to uniform load, convert it to a concentrated load. It's easier to deal with. So to convert it to concentrated load is basically the area underneath this triangle, and that's why I have it here, which is one half of 0.8 times 18. Where is the location of it is? Location of it is in the back of your book. You can see that for triangle load is one third from the base, which comes out about 12 feet from the end or six feet from its base right there. Then we're going to go ahead and use the second half of the triangle, do the same thing, convert that to a concentrated load. And when you do that, it's become the area underneath that triangle, which is one half of 0 0.8 or 800 times 9. We're going to convert the pound per kips. That's why we're using 0.8. Uh, and the location of it again is one third from the base, which comes out three feet from here. So now we, from here, we're going to go ahead and calculate our... Um, reaction AY and uh, BY. So one thing we're going to do to do that, to calculate the reaction, if you take a moment either by point A or point B, you can calculate the reaction. Right now I'm only concerned about uh, reaction at A, so I'm going to go ahead and take a moment by point uh, C. I mean, point, uh, this is a point B is right here. All right. Let's take a summation moment by point B. Um, summation moment about point B is equal to zero, counterclockwise is positive, so I'm going to start from here, it's going to be AY times B, and that's going to be negative, so minus AY times, uh, that's about 12 and 6 is 18 feet. Why is it negative? Because uh, I'm saying counterclockwise is positive. And my AY, it's going that way, and it's going to go clockwise. Then after here, when I leave from here, the next force I have, it's this one right here. And that's going to be a time uh, uh, BY. So it's going to be plus 1. That's going to come up positive. Plus 1 half time uh, 0.8 multiplied by 18. And the distance for that, it's going to be 6 feet. Then on the other end, I have this other force I've got to deal with. So that's going to come out again uh, negative. Because the rotation comes back this way. So I'm going to have minus 1 half of 0.8 times 9. And the distance from there to B is 3 feet. That's all the forces. And we cannot B cannot take a moment about point B because it's right on top of it. It's a zero. So equals zero. And that should give me AY is equal to, I have already calculated that, 1.8 kips. Okay. So really, so this comes out to right here 1.8 kips. It comes out to 1.8 kips. I don't care what B is at this point because I don't need it. What I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and cut the beam at point C right here. So I need all the forces on this side, which is this side of the B. 
when you cut all the forces here, we know Ay. So we have to figure out this concentrated load. How do we do that? I got to know the magnitude of this triangle. I know the triangle is all the way up here is 0.8 or 800. But what is it at this point right here, point C? The only the way to do that, we're going to find the slope of this line. And the slope of that line is what? Rise over run. So the slope is equal for that line is uh, 800.8 divided by 12 and 6 is 18. That's my slope. That means for every one foot that I go up, it's going to be, this is the, the rate. But I'm going up 12 feet, right? And right here is 8 and 4 is 12 feet. So that'd be time 12 feet. And that should give you, uh, I think I did calculate that. I do have it. 0.5333. So we know the uh, uh, magnitude of uh, this right here, this point here, this magnitude is 0.5333. And that's a kip per foot. Great. Now I want to know what the magnitude of this concentrated load is. So this concentrated load basically is going to come out to... Uh, uh, near a room, let's write a different color. That comes out to um, one half of uh, 0.533 times the distance is 8 and 4 is 12. So that's the magnitude of this concentrator load. That's good because I want to know now when I cut this beam right here at point C, you have to replace it with three forces here. So we cut it right here. We're going to replace it with a shear force, and which we call VC, normal force, which we're going to call NC, and uh, a moment MC. And now we have all, that's not MC hammer, by the way. So we got all this, uh, we've uh, replaced it with all these three forces. Let's calculate what all those three forces comes out to. How we do that? We know that. We all do uh, equation equilibrium. We do summation of moment, summation of FX, summation of FY, and we can calculate that. So when you look at this free body diagram, I know this, I just calculated this, came out to uh, uh, 1 half 0.53 times 12, and I don't know all this three, but I can find out through the equation. And we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, uh, do the summation of, uh, let's go green, shows that better. Summation fx first, summation fx is equal to zero, going right is positive, I have nothing. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. So NC comes out to zero. All right. NC is equal to zero. Now I do summation FOY is equal to zero. Going up is positive. I'm going to start from here. I'm going to have 1.8 kips minus one half time 0.533 time 12. And then I assumed the sign going up here, VC is going up, so it's a plus VC. Plus VC equals zero. Remember something. If you had these signs, say you put VC down, the number comes out negative, then you know your direction was wrong, so you gotta go up. Now, when you can make, we made the cut from this end. We made the cut from this end, and these are our sign. But if we make the cut from the other end, it be, should be the same, exactly, but opposite. This be down, this be the other way, and this the x will be going to the left. So from here, VC comes out to, I have calculated that, 1.4 kips. Let's find out what the, our bending moment doing at that point. And we're going to say, okay, summation moment at point C counterclockwise is positive. And we're going to have 1.8. That's going to be negative minus 1.8 multiplied by 12. And then we're going to have this force taking a moment about here. It's going to go out. It's going to be counterclockwise. So it's going to be positive. So it's going to be plus 1 half 0.533 times the distance is going to be 4 feet. And the next one is going to have MC itself, which is a, the sign we put as positive equals zero. So our MC comes out to uh, 8.8 .8 kips. 
8.8 kips. So these are the forces. Why we have these forces? Sometimes when we talk about the next lecture, we're going to come up as these forces, the, the internal forces, the stresses, is it going to exceed the allowable stress or the stress of the uh, uh, member? Where if I put a lot of load here, where this member is going to fail? You can find out where the maximum moment is going to be or maximum shear is going to be. Later on, we're going to learn to do the shear moment diagram, and then that way we know where a member can fail or where is 